We finally got a tube bender. I'm so excited, dude. I did my research, and there is no better value than Rogue Fabrications Model 600. It is the most affordable 180 degree plus tube bender on the market. It's vertical, so it doesn't take up a ton of room when you're bending long stock in the shop. And it's really upgradable and customizable. Speaking of what a great value it is, you wanna save a couple extra bucks, you can buy it as a weld together kit. And so that's what we got here. I think we're gonna go through, we'll get this thing all tacked up, assemble the entire bender, and show you guys how it's done. Sound good? Sounds like a plan. All right. So first things first, I have read through these directions five or six times now, and I definitely encourage that you do the same. It says right here in big yellow lettering, it is absolutely critical to your safety and the functionality of your new machine that you read these instructions. You will not be able to guess your way through this. Your safety, money, and machine warranty are at stake. So you guys wanna take this seriously. If you don't put this thing together right, if you don't weld it together, we're gonna to be bending steel. You got a big hydraulic ram on there. Things can get dangerous, so you wanna make sure that you don't skimp out, and you wanna make sure that you read this all the way through. So, without further ado, let's get started. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this small frame rail here, and I'm gonna slide it through the slots in our cylinder supports. Just like this. Now you're gonna want a nice flat surface to do this on. We've got our little welding table here. Now that we've got this, the next thing we wanna do is we're gonna take these long frame rails and set them up right here on the sides. Just like this. Okay. Get these about where we want them. Now that we've got our frame rails in place, we're gonna go ahead and take our base plate. And this is gonna slot right in here. You can see each of these cylinder supports are gonna slide into these slots cut in the base plate. And then also, as you can see from the top here, we've got a couple of slots here that the ends of these cylinder supports are going to lock into in order to lock everything up exactly where we want it. So now what I'm gonna do is just make sure that my frame rails are flush to all the edges of our base plate. You're gonna wanna take your time with this. Just get everything lined up. It's fun, it's like adult Legos, you know? Just more electricity. So that looks pretty good. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start tack welding the base plate to the frame rails. And I'm actually gonna leave the cylinder supports untacked for now, because I wanna make sure I get everything else set up right first, and then we'll come in and adjust these after the fact. Um, and make sure everything's straight and that these, again, are sticking up through here just like they need to be. The other thing you wanna do is, we're just tack welding this here, but when you do go to actually weld everything down, you're gonna to wanna to weld in sections so you don't overheat the material and cause any warpage. Check that nothing moved on me. All right, let's get some tacks on here. You notice I'm using these scalloped edges of the base plate here to set up my tacks, and these are gonna be actually where you put your weld when you go to weld this thing off together. When you read the instructions, like I told you to, you're gonna notice that they tell you a couple places where you don't have to weld all the way through everything, and one of those is these outer edges. So 
So now that I've got our base plate and frame rails all tacked together, we've got these guys still floating in here and pull these up into their slots and just give it a little tiny tack here so that I know everything's gonna stay flush. And then I'll flip this over and weld it up from the other side. Pull out my trusty square. All right, this one's nice and square. I'm gonna give it a couple tacks. And I just barely put these little tacks on here just so I can adjust this and it'll kind of hold its position for me. <clears throat> now that I've got that, we're gonna flute this whole assembly over. So the next thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna tack the bottom of these cylinder supports to the bottom of the base plate, but the one thing I want to make sure I take into account is this brace right here is going to sit flush to the end of our cylinder supports, and so you want to make sure you don't tack on the very ends of these cylinder supports so that your support sits flush. Let's go in and give it some tack. I'm going a little overboard for just tacking this together, but I figure it's better safe than sorry, right? Now that we got our lower brace installed, we're gonna flip this back over. And we're gonna add the front brace. And this is one we're gonna wanna pull out our square for. good idea to run a couple of tacks along this edge here. That way we don't have any flex in the plate. Although the new M600s, you can see these slots don't extend all the way to the edge, which is gonna give us a lot of nice stiffness, which is awesome. All right. <clears throat> so that's all the tacks we're gonna do on the base plate here. So try, I'll let you do a quick walk around so you can get a look at those. Just show everybody where some good tack points are. And when you do go to weld this together, you're gonna wanna make sure you put nice beads across all the seams here um, on the edges where the supports touch the frame rails. But for now, like I said, these are just tacks. It's a good idea to tack your machine together, assemble it, make sure everything's gonna fit and then go and weld it all down for real. So there's all the tacks up top. Flip it over. Let me take a look at the ones inside. We're good with this for now. We can pull this off the table. And now we'll grab our uprights and we're gonna weld some washers as spacers to the inside here. So you're gonna wanna make sure you have these oriented left and right. Um, that way you don't end up welding both of your washers on the same side of these plates. So here we go. Let's grab ourselves our washer. And these washers are gonna line up. These are three quarter inch washers and there's only one three quarter inch hole on each of these plates at the top of the upright. And so we'll get these set up nice and concentric, nice and lined up. And then all we're gonna do is four little tacks uh, equally spaced. And if you can keep them so that they're lower than the surface of the washer, you won't have to grind them down after. So we're gonna try our best here to make that happen.
Don't have to go crazy here. These are just spacers, nothing super structural. Just wanna keep them in place. One less piece of hardware to have falling out on you when you're switching dies or assembling your machine. Now that we've got our washers tacked in, slide these over a little bit, get our base again. And now you can see on the bottom of our uprights, we've got this nice little tab here that's gonna fit directly into our slot. It's gonna be critical that these be nice and perpendicular to your base and Rogue Fab recommends that you install the machine's pins at this point as you're welding everything together to make sure everything stays straight and that those pins and holes are all gonna line up when you go to actually assemble your machine. So you can see here, even a little bit of variation, if you don't have these perfectly square, it is gonna cause your pins to bind up and we don't want that. So that's why we're taking this little extra step here. I think that should be enough. And the rest will handle with the square. I'm going to square these and tack them one at a time, just to make sure nothing moves on me. Double check to see that that didn't move. Because as you weld, there's a tendency for the material to want to pull out of position. Making sure to tack these uprights in thoroughly because they are pretty heavy. So I'm happy with that one. Now let's go ahead and square the back side. See that? That's what you want. Nice and easy. It's gonna make reassembly later and the use of this bender really a pleasure nice so that concludes the tacking together of this entire bottom part of the bender and so now we can move this aside and we'll bring up our bend wheels and get working on those oh she's a heavy one what are you trying to say Thick. You remember seeing me try to lift this whole box onto the table earlier? It was embarrassing. That's why they don't call me Big Bob. So this is very crucial. You'll see here in the instructions that you should be following. Um, they've got a nice diagram here showing you exactly how to lay these bend wheels out so that you make sure you weld everything on the right sides. And so as per the instructions, I have one on this side, flip the other one over. We're running out of table space, but that's all right. As long as they're grounded, right? Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is you can see these slots here on the side of the bender. And these are so we can line up our little st sticker protectors. These are just a couple pieces of steel that we're gonna weld in here. And there's gonna be a, a degree indicator sticker that runs along the outside of it. 
And so this is just to protect that sticker as the bender is in operation so you don't scuff it up with the side of the uprights. I'm a perfectionist and so we're gonna get this lined up just right. And now, like I said, the sticker's gonna run along the outside of this radius and so we're gonna put all of our tacks on the inside. That way we don't get in the way when we put our sticker on later. Those aren't going anywhere. All right, now that we've got our sticker protector on the outside, we're gonna flip both of these wheels over and I'm gonna weld in a couple of washers on the inside as spacers. Similar to like we did with the uprights. So again, just line these up. And just like before, I'm gonna try and keep my welds low, below the surface, that way we don't have to do any excess grinding. So if you do miss a little bit and get on top, not a big deal, just break the flap wheel out. And I'm just gonna knock this down right here since it's easy to access. Everybody makes mistakes, you know? All right, so that concludes all of our tack welding. Obviously we're gonna weld this whole thing up for real before we go to actually use it. But at this point, we can move our bend wheels aside and we'll grab the actual frame. Get these out of our way. Now the first thing we're gonna do is install the hydraulic ram. So, got our ram here. And this is gonna run right through here. And we'll install this with the included hardware. Now, with our ram installed, I'm gonna kinda let it come out a little bit. And then on the end of our ram, we're gonna install this W block, which is gonna hold our return springs. And now, with our W block installed, we're gonna add our return springs. The big hook on this side goes into the W block and the small hook here hooks right into the frame. There we go. Just pull this back and hook right in. And these return springs are so that the piston will return back to its resting position once you're finished with your bend. There we go. Now that we've got our RAM, W block, and return springs installed, next up is to bring in our bending wheels. And again, we welded those washers on here, and these are gonna go on the inside like this, and we're gonna use our three quarter inch pin. Line these up. Now, depending on what kind of die you're gonna be using, Rogue Fab recommends different amount of washers to space everything properly. We're using a one inch die for our one inch tubing. And so we're gonna be putting four washers on either side. So there's our four. Next, we're gonna install the bend wheel. This is what your tubing actually wraps around as you're making your bends. And 
And then another four washers on the outside of that. And now that we've got all our washers in place, the last thing to do is put on our last bending wheel. Again, just like last time, we've got our washer on the inside. This time our degree indicator will be on the outside. And now we can go ahead and install the cotter pen. Can we? Ooh, weird angle, gotcha. All right, now that we've got our bend wheels and our bending die installed, next we're gonna attach the ram. So we'll take one of our 5 8 pins and we are gonna go to the very first hole here. You'll see that there's three of these holes along the side of the bend wheel. The first one will allow you to bend to about 90 degrees. The next one, you can switch then and bend to about 140 degrees. And then the final hole will allow you to bend to right around 195, give or take, uh, degrees if your material will allow it. But we're gonna start with the very first hole here. Both bending wheels. Full disclosure, I may have misplaced a couple washers, so you can see a little wobble here. When you have your washers properly installed, you won't have any of that. I'll take the fall. Cotter pin is in place. Looks good. All right, so up next, we've got the upgraded pressure roller die. One sec, one sec. Well, I can't put the whole bender in frame right now. Let's just back up the camera real quick. Just vertical bender things. Much better. So like I was saying, we have an upgraded uh, pressure roller die. Your bender may come with one that just sort of looks like a U-shape. This allows the die to roll with your material as it bends, and it's going to allow you to not have to use as much lubrication. As far as lubrication, when you are bending with this bender, you're going to want to lubricate your dies and your material that you're bending. And Rogue Fab on their website carries um, a, their suggested lubricant that's sort of a, a thicker material that requires you to lubricate less frequently and doesn't run like maybe a silicone sprayer or WD-40. So that's worth checking out. And so this little guy is going to get lined up with this hole right here. I'm going to hold it in from the middle. Something I just noticed that I didn't take into account is these pins are different lengths. You want to be careful of that. We're going to need the long one to make it through both uprights and the bending wheels. And this short one we can use down here for the ram. So I'm going to switch those real quick. Woo! Line these back up. Good. Now we'll take our, our longer pen, run it through our pressure die, and again, insert your cotter pen on the back side here. So at this point, I'm going to take a second to install our degree indicator. Um, the standard degree indicator you get is this uh, piece of copper wire here that works just fine. We opted to get the upgraded degree pointer, and that is this little guy right here. So, in order to install this, it comes with instructions right here, and the hardware you need. You're gonna have to pull the pin out up top here, and this will slide right on over it. This, of course, would make more sense to install after you've got everything painted, you've got your stickers on and all that, but here we're just trying to get through all the mechanical install of it. So let's go ahead. Got a washer here. It's gonna go 
on the back side of this degree indicator and then on your actual hardware we're going to put a, our little spring and another washer Let's see if we can't get this all lined up you want to be careful as you install these to not over torque them there's only three threads on this hardware and we don't want to strip it out. So one more time, same thing for down here. And as you can see, there's a lot of adjustability in here so you can dial in your degree indicator to read perfectly, lock it down, set it and forget it. If you are worried about it loosening up, Rogue Fab uh, recommends that you use a little bit of blue Loctite, but I'm not too worried about it. And so for this second hole down here, you're gonna to need to use a quarter inch 28 tap in order to tap the threads into this hole to accept this hardware. Let's go take a look if we have one. Take our quarter inch 28 tap, keep that right in here, and carefully tap these out. Slide this pin back, give myself some room. Again, this is an upgrade, and so if you're just using the standard degree indicator, you should only need the one hole. Same procedure, one washer behind, another washer, your spring, and then the hardware. Find our threads. And there we go. Like I said, you've got plenty of adjustability here. We don't have our degree indicator sticker installed, and so I'm just gonna leave it here for now. But that's how you install your upgraded degree pointer. And our final step is to install the clamp block. The clamp block is going to clamp onto your tubing and hold it in the machine. It's also gonna allow you to set the offset of your bend, and that is on Rogue Fab's website, as well as on here you can see this sticker once we have it all painted up, we'll be stuck right here. And you can see we've got three separate holes for the clamp block to get inserted into, depending on which size uh, die you're using. We're using a 3.5 CLR die, and so we're gonna use the top hole here. First thing I'm gonna do to make this a little bit easier is we'll take our tubing and set this right inside along both dies. Since we're using a long piece here, come over to the other side. Get this nice and cinched down. The GoPro is also optional. Is that part of the upgrade kit? It's part of the Tyrannus upgrade kit filmmaking toolkit. All right. And then finally, like I said, we're going to use this top section here, the top hole, since we're using a 3.5 inch CLR die. Set this through. Insert our pin. And there we go. Ready to bend. Well, almost ready. I still have to weld this all up, but that pretty much concludes the assembly of the Model 600 tube bender from Rogue Fab. This thing is really great. Like I said, we chose it because it's incredibly affordable, super customizable and upgradable. Like we have, like I mentioned, we've got the upgraded uh, pressure roller die, which allows you to let the material move easier through the machine, allows you also to put your bends much closer together, sometimes even touching depending on what material you're using. So, man, I can't wait to get this welded up and start using it. We'll have to do another video at some point of the actual operation of the machine and how to get your bends, how to set your offset, and all that fun stuff. But for now, I'm really happy with this. How's it look on camera, Trey? That thing looks like a monster on camera. It is a monster, man. It doesn't even, it hardly fits in frame. It's my kind of tool. This is such a huge upgrade for our shop. We've been needing this so bad. I don't even want to think about how we were bending tube before. 
we have a dirty little secret. We've done it all on a Harbor Freight pipe bender. I'm not proud of it. Harbor Freight got us a long way, but we're in the game now. If you guys found this helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. Like I said, we're gonna be doing more videos on this bender and using it on our brand new cross cart project that we're gonna be starting up very soon. I'm really excited, and if you guys are in the market for a two bender, definitely check out the Model 600. This thing is an absolute beast. So stay tuned, and we'll see you in the next one.